come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to our world of mystery and the macabre, of unbearable suspense. Sit back and lend us your imagination for a while. We'll do some remarkable things with it. Imagine, for instance, an elderly woman, Belle Richwood, alone and forgotten, except for her nephew Charles, her only living relative and the only human being she ever sees, until one lonely night. You're back. I can't believe it. I, look, I, I've had just about enough of this. You people simply have to stop coming into my apartment. This just isn't right. I, I'm entitled to my privacy. Will you answer me when I speak to you? Now, get out of here and leave me alone. Oh. Oh, we won't have it. I'm going to tell Charles. He has to do something about this. Oh. Hello? Oh, Charles. Hello, Aunt Belle. Oh, will you get over here and get these people out? Who, oh, Aunt Belle? That, that man who was here last week. And this time he has a friend. A lady friend, no less. I'm frightened, Charles. You mean that guy is back? He certainly is. With this strange woman. Oh, hurry, Charles. Please. Our mystery drama, Strange Company, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Bryna Rayburn. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal, and by new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As we grow older, very often our fears darken, our anxieties deepen. And our thoughts indulge in some strange tricks. Belle Richwood and her sister Julia lived their whole lives together. Almost recluses. Until the neighborhood around them deteriorated to the point where their nephew Charles was forced to move them from the city to a peaceful apartment in the country. But for Belle and Julia, there was to be no peace. Hello? Oh, Charles... It's about time you answered. What's the matter now, Aunt Belle? Julia's fallen again. Can you get right over? All right, Aunt Belle. Uh, cover her up. I'll be right there. Oh, for heaven's sake, hurry up. She's not moving this time. I, I think she's unconscious. Julia's fallen again. Third time this week. Charles, Julia simply has got to go to a nursing home. Whether Belle likes it or not, she can't take care of Julia anymore, and we can't go on like this. I know, Linda, I know. What are we going to use for money? All they've got is their social security. And I'm so deep in hock myself, I can't pay for a nursing home. Well, I'm sick of you running over there at all hours to pick Julia off the floor. Or get her out of a bathtub. She's too old to be getting into a tub anyway. Well, I'm fed up too. I don't see why you bothered with them after your mother died. I'm their only blood relative. I had to get involved. Well, go pick Julia off the floor. And hurry back. Dinner's almost ready. Oh, well, you took your time. Where is she? In the bedroom. Hurry. Oh, can, can you get her up? No, Aunt Belle. Julia. Julia's dead. Oh, oh no. No, 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 Charles. She's she's just unconscious. No, she's... Aunt Belle, she's gone. No, no, I, I, I can't believe it. it, it... The fall was just too much for her. <laughs> Not my Julie. She can't be. No, Ju Ju Julia, dear, wake, wake Please, up, wake Aunt up, Aunt Belle. I can't, I can't. Please. I, I'll have to make some phone calls first. I'll, I'll, I'll take you back to our place. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I can't. I can't leave Julia. But they'll be taking her away in a little while. You'll be better off at home with Linda. <laughs> It was all because we moved to this apartment. We should have stayed in the city. Aunt Belle, we've been through uh, all this. I moved you out of the city because you were mugged twice in your own elevator. This, this place isn't any better. 
<laughs> Julia always hated this apartment. I think it hates us. It's it's evil. <laughs> Julia's gone. What am I going to do? Oh, no, now no. you've got to think about yourself. <laughs> Myself. I haven't thought about myself for 60 years. It's, it's always been Julia. But you won't have to worry about her anymore. <laughs> what do you mean, Charles? I'm more worried about her. More than ever. It's time to leave, Aunt Bell. Oh, couldn't, couldn't I stay with her a little while longer? She looks just as though she's asleep. A few minutes more. We'll wait in the lobby. Oh. Ju- Julia, dear, do you want to wake up now? Aunt Bell. It's all right, Linda. Perhaps you're better off sleeping, dear. I'll have a nice snack ready for you when you wake. Come on, Linda. But, Charles... I said, come on. She shouldn't be alone in there. She doesn't believe Julia's dead. Yes, she does. But you heard us... Bell's been a sister to Julia for 60 years. And a mother for 10. It'll take her time to get over Julia's death. It gives me the chills. Don't worry about it. Oh, I suppose we'd, we'd better go now. You'll have to be getting back to work. I'm not working today, Aunt Bell. I got the day off. You're coming back to the house with us. Well, Charles, I, I have to settle with you about the funeral expense. I'll, I'll take care of them, of course. There's plenty of time for that later. No. Oh. I want you to watch your head. Oh, That's it. Thank you, Charles. Yes, I, I'm in. Well, Linda, would you want her any more rational than that? I suppose not. What a relief. You didn't have to see me in, Charles. I'll be all right. Don't be silly, Aunt Belle. And... Thanks for having me to dinner. You were right. I I wouldn't have wanted to be alone today. I hate leaving you now, but... Oh, I'll be all right. I I have to get used to it. I'll stop in tomorrow night after work. Yes, do. And I'll give you the money for the expenses. Do you know how much they are? Well, I can wait, Aunt Bell. In fact, I didn't think you'd be able to cover it. I was planning to take out a loan. Oh, nonsense. I have it, and I'll pay it. Well, it's it's $1,500. All right. I'll, I'll have it counted out for you tomorrow. You mean you have that much in cash here? I don't think that's a wise thing to do. No, nonsense. I've always had cash on hand. Well, that's up to you. You'll be all right tonight? Don't worry about me. Come by tomorrow. I lock the door behind me. I always do. Good night, Aunt Belle. Good night, Charles. Huh. 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 I wonder if there's any ginger ale in the refrigerator. Oh, oh, that reminds me. I wanted to tell Charles. <laughs> Charles! Charles! Oh, oh he's gone. Huh. 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 Hello, Linda. Yes, yes, I'm all right. Oh, Linda, Charles just left, and I, I wanted to tell him something. Would you please have him call when he gets in? Yes, thank you. I may as well start. Oh, oh. oh you. How did you get in here? Answer me. What do you want? I order you to leave my apartment. Why don't you say something? Stop sitting there smiling. How dare you just come in and sit on my furniture? Tell me what you want if you don't. I'll get you out of here. I'm calling my nephew. He'll... Oh, oh dear. I remember he isn't home. Please. Please... What do you want? Why won't you answer me? I'll, I'll give you whatever you want if you please leave. Please. Oh, thank God, Charles. 
I just got in and Linda said you wanted to see me. Oh, Charles. Charles, there's there's a strange man in my apartment. What? He's sitting on the sofa. He won't say anything and he won't leave. Did he threaten you? No, no, he isn't doing anything, but but he won't go. I'll be right there. Now, don't do anything to antagonize him. Aunt Belle. Aunt Belle. Oh, oh, Charles. Charles, thank you for coming. Where is he? Oh, he's gone. Oh, thank God for that. I called the police. But how did he get in? Tell me what happened. I don't know. I, I put the chain on the door after you. Then I called Linda, and when I turned around, there he was. He must have been in the apartment when we arrived. In the bedroom or the bathroom, maybe. He must have been. I, I certainly didn't let him in, but oh, he left in a hurry when he heard me talking to you. Well, I'll check the rest of the apartment just to be sure. You no, know, I'm more mad than scared. The, the nerve of him just sitting there smiling, not saying a word. I'll get it. Mr. Gordon? Oh, yes, yes. Come in, officer. You uh, reported a prowler? Uh, yes. Uh, this is my aunt, Miss Richwood. Just a few questions. You say he was here in the apartment? Yes, sitting right on that sofa. I think he was hiding here when we came in, officer. Uh, We had just got back from the funeral of Miss Richwood's sister. What time was that? Um, About nine. And you didn't see him then? No. Mm. Tell me, Miss Richwood, what did he do or or say? Uh, Did he threaten you? No, no, he he wouldn't say a word. He just sat there, smiling. And when did he leave? Well, when my nephew called, that must have scared him off. Because when I turned back, he he was gone. All right, Miss Richwood. We're searching the rest of the building. We'll put out a bulletin on him. We'll uh, call you if we find a suspect. We'll need an identification. Yes, of course. Good night, now. Uh, Good night, officer, and thank you. Aunt Belle, now you've got to come home with me. You can't stay here alone tonight. Oh, I I have to stay here, Charles. I don't dare leave the apartment. Not if someone's getting in. But then I'll have to stay with you. Oh, no, you don't. No, I'll be all right. Now that we know there's no one here... Well, I, I hate I'll to... lock the door. No one will get in. And with the police around, I feel doubly safe. Okay, Aunt Belle... But I'll call you when I get home, and I'll be in after work tomorrow. Oh, yes. Do come by, Charles. I'll, I'll have the money for you, uh, for Julia's funeral. And Belle, your money, could this, this guy have taken it? Oh, I don't know. He didn't seem to. Oh, dear. Where'd you have it? In the bedroom. I always thought this was the safest. Oh, oh no, thank heaven. No, it's here. You are sure? All of it? Well, the suitcase is here. He, he couldn't have known. Oh, yes, yes. There's no money missing. Good grief. Oh, it's... It's all there. I'm not worried, Charles. That man won't be back. But, Aunt Belle, all that money... Oh, don't worry, Charles. I'm going to hide my money in a different place. Just in case. Charles, it's time Belle went into a nursing home. Or at least a home for the aging. That man last week could have killed her. She shouldn't be living alone. She's doing all right. She's doing all right. And what about us? I'm sick of sharing you with them. Or her now. For two years, you've been nursemaid to Belle and Julia. Linda, it had to be that way. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everything. And if you won't put her in a nursing home, I'll leave you, Charlie. No, you won't. You just see. Belle's not going to a nursing home, Linda. Those homes cost money. The state takes care of old people who don't have money. But Belle has money, Linda. Lots of it. What do you mean, lots of it? (sighs) A suitcase so full of hundreds she can hardly close it. I saw it that night the man got in. She opened it in front of my eyes and counted out the 1500 for the undertaker. So great, she's got some money. She can afford a nursing home. Oh, no, Linda. I'm not going to see that money go into a nursing home. That money is going to be ours. You mean we're in her will? She hasn't got a will. But she's got a suitcase full of money. And I'm her only next of kin. So? What good is it to you? I'm the only one who knows it's there. When she dies, Linda, that money is ours. 
The way I feel now, every cent she spends is coming out of my pocket. But she might live for years. She might. And that's why I want to keep her in her nice, little, cheap apartment. She doesn't spend more than $15 a week for food. We're going to be extra nice to Aunt Belle, Linda. After all, we're protecting an investment. You're back. I can't believe it. I, look, I, I've had just about enough of this. You people simply have to stop coming into my apartment. Get out of here and leave us alone. Well, well, we won't have it. I'm going to tell Charles he has to do something about this. Oh, oh Charles. Hello, Aunt Bell. Will you get over here and get these people out? Oh, Aunt Bell. That man who was here last week. And this time he has a friend. A lady friend, no less. Aunt Bell, you mean that guy is back? He certainly is, and with a strange woman. I'll be right over. Oh, please do. They're upsetting Julia terribly. I think she's afraid of them. Julia? Aunt Bell, Julia is dead. She can't be there. <laughs> Strange company indeed. That suspicious man is back. And with a lady friend. An accomplice, no doubt. It's not easy being alone and old and rich. But Julia, that sort of thing doesn't happen. Belle must be imagining things. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Let's return to the apartment of Belle Richwood, where, so she says, her late sister has spent the day, along with some other questionable companions. Her nephew Charles is with her now, and it seems as though the visitors have left. Belle, look. There's no one in this chair. I know. They're not here now. And this is where you saw Julia in this chair? Yes. Yes, and I'm so worried. Where can she be? Aunt Belle, you know Julia passed away. Julia is dead. Yes, I know. I, I feel so terrible about Julia. Do you think we should call the police? No, no, they couldn't help. But, but they could look for her. I remember one time in the city she wandered away. Aunt Belle, stop it. What? Charles. We cannot look for Julia because Julia is dead. I know, Julia's dead. Then stop saying you saw her in the apartment. It's all right, Charles. I, I won't mention Julia again. But I do wish you'd do something about the other two. The other two? I told you before. The man who comes in here. And now the woman. Oh, yes, those. I simply don't understand how they're getting in. Doesn't it stand to reason that you're imagining there's a man and woman here? Charles, I know real people when I see them. Have you... Have you ever touched them? Oh, heavens, no. But that might convince you. Oh, why should I have to touch them? I, I know they're here. But they never speak, isn't that right? Oh, yes, that's true. They, they don't talk. Aunt Belle, I don't know who or what they are, but there's nothing I can do about them. Well, I can. The next time they show up, I'm calling the police. No, I wouldn't do that, Aunt Belle. You, you couldn't tell them any more than you already have. Well, they can certainly put a stop to strange people in my apartment. And another thing, I'm going to find another place to hide my money. Well, that, that is a good idea. Yeah, Charles, come closer. They might be listening. Now, I want you to know where my money is, just in case... I'm going to hide that suitcase. You know, the one you saw it. Yes. I'm going to hide that behind the refrigerator. Good idea. But where should I hide the other one? Two suitcases full of money? And who knows if that's even all. You see why I want to keep things just as they are? But surely... That man that's getting in with, with all that money there. There is no man. Or Julia either. She's imagining that Julia is back. And she imagines she sees those people too. They aren't there. Oh, it's, it's just one of those things that comes with age. Hardening of the arteries or something like that. It does things to the brain. But if they're so real to her... Yes, they are real to her. And 
All that money is real to me. All ours when Belle... Dies? Yes. As long as no one else knows the money's there. No one does. Then you'd better make sure she doesn't talk to anyone. Why, to? I'm the only person she ever sees. She wanted to call the police about Julia. Don't worry. I see her every night now. I'll keep her under control. Hi, Aunt Belle. Oh, Charles, I'm so glad you came by tonight. I know how those people are getting in. You do? Yes, through here. They're coming right through this door. Aunt Belle, that's a closet. It's the clothes closet. Oh, that explains where they live, then. They always come through this door. In fact, that woman came in today, and nice as you please, she picked up my coat and put it on. I, I could have smacked her face. Maybe you should have, Aunt Belle. Well, I, I couldn't bring myself to do that. But you would have found out that woman doesn't exist. She's just in your imagination. Oh, yes? Well, I'm not imagining Missing a hundred dollars. What? I had the rent money all counted out. It was in an envelope on the kitchen table. And now it's gone. I reported it to the police. Aunt Belle, you didn't. Well, of course. Why shouldn't I? Because you probably misplaced the money and think it's gone. What did the police say? Well, that nice young officer who came the other time said they'd send out a search for that woman. She's the one. I know. Belle, I don't think you ought to keep so much money around. Well, I, I had thought of putting it in the bank. I was thinking... Maybe you ought to let me take care of it for you. I mean, with one case behind the refrigerator... Shh, shh. They'll hear you. Don't let them know where it is. Oh. Yes, you're right, Aunt Bell. Is... Is anybody watching? Now. No. Oh. Good. Oh, come on. We're going to move the suitcases. Now, you get the one behind the refrigerator, and I'll get the one under the sink. Uh, how did you ever get it back here? I can hardly... Uh, there it is. I'm simply going to put them in the bathroom and keep an eye on them. They say if you really want to hide something, keep it out in the open where no one would think of looking for it. Yes, I've heard of that. Well, come on. Bring that case in here to the bathroom. Right away, Aunt Belle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she won't miss it. Charles, Charles, bring the case in here. Okay, Aunt Val, I'm coming. Here you are. Oh, put it there in the tub next to the other one. No one's going to look for my money there. Now, how about a nice glass of wine? <laughs> Good boy, Charlie. Now you're using your head. She'll never miss it. But if she does, we know who to blame it on. A bunch of people who don't even exist. The only thing that worries me... What? They exist for her. They're real to her. Well, so what? She count her money every day? She probably will now. Like you said, Charlie, you're her next of kin. The money's ours anyway when she dies... We're just taking a little advance. I ordered that bracelet I've been wanting at Wilson's Jewelers. But if she finds any more missing, she might go to the police. Well, then, why don't you get there before she does? Oh, hello, Miss Richwood. Oh, Mr. Keller, I I'm sorry to bother you. Ah, that's what superintendents are for, Miss Richwood. And you don't bother me a tenth as much as some of the other people in this building. Well, Mr. Geller, I, I wonder if you'd mind coming upstairs and getting rid of those people. I, I can't seem to make them leave this time. People? What people? Why, all those people in my apartment. Oh, sure. I'll throw them out. Come on. Oh, I, I really hate to bother you, but my nephew's at work and... I'm afraid to call the police again. All right. I don't want strange people in my building. Much less in one of the apartments. Don't worry. I'll get them out. Oh. Why? 
Well, where did they all go? You uh, sure there were people here, Miss Richwood? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm not crazy yet. There was that man and woman who always come in and... and two little girls. Well, we didn't pass them on the stairs. And there's no floor above this. How can they get out? Oh, but... Now my sister's gone, too. Oh, do you think they took her with them? Oh, this is terrible. How am I going to find Julia? Mr. Gordon? Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Geller. Mr. Gordon, this isn't my business, really, but I don't think your aunt ought to be living alone. What happened? Uh, she called me up today to throw some people out of her apartment. And there wasn't anybody there. That, 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 that's right. And then she started looking for her sister. Yes, she shouldn't be living alone. I'm trying to get another living arrangement for her. I think that's a good idea. I wouldn't want her to be embarrassed, you, you know, by other tenants. I know. Just thought I'd mention it. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Geller. Bell, it's me. Oh, come in, Charles. Did I have a day? Bell, oh. you shouldn't have gone to the superintendent. Well, I had to get those people out. I suppose you did. <sighs> Aunt Bell, how about a glass of wine? Oh, of course. I, I have some chilling in the refrigerator. I'll just wash up in the bathroom, if you don't mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, do you want an ice cube in yours, Charles? Ah, uh, sure, fine. Now, let's see. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Charles, what are you doing? I'll be right there, just drying my hands. I didn't get a chance to wash up at the shop. Oh, well, sit down and have your wine. <laughs> I've got something important to tell you. Yes? I've been robbed. What? A thousand dollars gone from one of my suitcases. No. No, I, I had a feeling something was missing, and I, I counted all the money in that particular case. A thousand dollars gone. Are you sure? Maybe you didn't count it right. Oh, no, no, I counted it twice. In fact, I'm going to count it again with you here to make sure. We'll, we'll count it together, and you'll see. <laughs> Six hundred. Well, that's right. But it should be eight thousand, even with that one thousand gone. You mean there's more missing? Yes, four hundred more. I, I, I just don't know what to do. I, I'm running out of hiding places. Those awful people. Aunt Bell, why don't you let me take care of it for you? You? Yes, I'll keep the suitcases. They'll be safe with me. Those people are stealing from you. You can't keep all that money around anymore. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, you're, you're right, Charles. Uh, I've never done this before. But on Friday, I'm putting it all in the bank. Oh, don't let her, Charlie. Keep things just as they are. I need another 2000 for Wilson's jewelers by Saturday. I'll stall her, don't worry. Even if I have to kill the goose that lays the golden eggs. <laughs> It's not safe to have cash lying around these days, particularly when you have unscrupulous relatives. Strange how the smell of money can drive people to acts they'd never dream of committing. We'll see just how far Charles Gordon is willing to go when I return shortly with Act Three. Charles Gordon seems to have a good thing going for him. An almost unlimited supply of cash, thanks to his aunt and a few suspicious visitors. But now, Belle threatens to spoil all that by putting her money in the bank. And Charles did say he was going to protect his investment. Charlie, you wouldn't kill her. I'll find some way to stop her from putting that money in the bank. That's not what you said. You said kill. So I said kill. I didn't mean it. Now get off my back. Look, Charlie, I want that money as much as you do. Just let me handle it, will you? And shut up. What are you doing? Protecting our investments. Uh, 
Uh, hello, Mr. Geller. This is Mr. Gordon. Miss Richwood's nephew. Uh, fine, thanks. Uh, I hate to bother you, but I wonder if you'd mind running upstairs and seeing if my aunt is okay. She doesn't answer the phone. No, and, and, and she wouldn't be in bed at this hour. Thanks, I'll wait. Charlie, you've got something going I don't like. That was an outright lie. A white lie. I want him on my side. What do you mean, your side? I've been thinking about this a long time. I just leave it to me. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, thanks, Mr. Geller. Uh, was her door bolted with a chain? Good. Well, thanks again. I wanted to be sure she was okay. She wasn't feeling too well when I left her tonight. Thanks again. Goodbye. Okay, Charlie. I won't ask any more. Stop worrying, Linda. Tomorrow I'm going to see Aunt Belle and persuade her not to put her money in the bank. It's as simple as that. Oh, I... I thought you weren't coming by tonight. I just wanted to drop in and talk. Well, Charles, what are you up to? What do you mean? Why did you have the superintendent come up and check on me last night? I just wanted to make sure you were all right. I was all right, and you knew it. Charles, I know you took the money. The money you said they must have taken. Ah, uh, Belle, I, I didn't take your money. Why, did, why do you think I did? They told me. The little man who wasn't there and his girlfriend. They saw you take it and they told me. Aunt Belle, I can't reason with you. I can't argue with hallucinations. You just think what you want. Well, I'm getting all the money into the bank where it will be safe from you. Oh, brother. Charles, I, I'll give you a chance to give it back. Before I go to the police. The police? Well, of course. You stole from me, and I have witnesses. Such as they are. Anyway, you'll have your money safe in the bank soon, won't you? You bet I will. Yes, well, I, uh, I have to be getting home. You want me to drive you to the bank on Friday? I'll get a cab. Thank you. I'm sorry you feel this way, Aunt Belle. You should have thought of that before you took the money. Oh, uh, Aunt Belle, uh, you'll be sure... To lock the door behind me. I always do. And particularly the chain bolt. That's very important. I know that. I'll call you tomorrow. All right. I'll be waiting for you to return the money. I'll be sure and put the chain bolt on. I will. Good night, Charles. Aunt Belle, it's me. I forgot something. <laughs> what? Open the door, but keep the chain on. I just want to tell you something. Don't take the chain off. Oh, what do you want? Pleasant dreams, you old witch. Well, did you persuade her? Uh, she won't be putting her money in the bank. She changed her mind. How come? Well, I made her see there wasn't anything to worry about. I finally convinced her the people she was seeing were in her imagination. Then you didn't... Didn't what? Hurt her. Linda, what do you think I am? Would I hurt a frightened old woman, much less my own aunt? I just can't help thinking what you said about the goose that lays the golden eggs. Oh, come on, Linda. Belle's all right. You want me to prove it to you? Call her? No... No, Charlie, I'll take your word. Oh, I want to prove it to you. You think I've turned into an ogre or something? Just over a few lousy bucks? I didn't mean that, Charlie. Well, I'll show you. Hello, Aunt Belle. Everything all right? Well, Linda and I were just talking about you, and, and we wanted to be sure everything was okay. Good. Good to see you tomorrow night, Aunt Belle. She's fine. Oh, hello, Mr. Gordon. Oh, anything wrong? I don't know. My aunt doesn't answer the door. Could you come up and open it with your key? I'm worried. Oh, sure, Mr. Gordon. Now, she might be asleep, but she hasn't been feeling too well lately, and I'm a little concerned. Well, like I said before, 
A lady like your aunt shouldn't be living alone. Yes, I know. I've, I've got to do something about her. Uh, she's got the chain on. Aunt Bell? Mr. Gordon, look. She's on the floor, right by the door. We'll have to break it in. Let's go. Uh, Aunt Bell. I, I think she's dead, Mr. Gordon. She is. Look at her head. She must have hit this table. We never should have left her alone last night. She was feeling weak. I, I'd better call the police. Yes, please. I'll go downstairs and call them. I'm sure sorry, Mr. Gordon. Yes, hurry, please. Well, dear Aunt Bell, I'm sorry, too. Sorry I didn't do this sooner. It's all you deserve for the trouble you've given me for months. Now, I'm going to get what I deserve. I'll try under the bed first. Yeah, not there. Empty. You clever old bird. I bet you would think of that. Back under the sink. And the other must be behind the refrigerator. Where I'd never think of looking for them, huh? Huh, Bell? Mr. Gordon, the police are on the way. Thanks. They said not to touch anything. No, no, we mustn't touch anything. That hit on the head must have done it. Poor Olga. Yes, I wish I'd moved her out sooner to a retirement home. Oh, looks like she was planning to go somewhere with those suitcases ready. Oh, those. Oh, she, uh, she always had her memoirs out to look at. Uh, they're full of old photos, school programs. She's shown them to me a hundred times. Ah, uh, that's all they've got at this age, memories. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to take these along with me. They're really all that's left of Aunt Belle. And I'll give the furniture to some charity. Well, oh, oh say, <laughs> my brother just got married, and he sure could use... Police! Oh, come in, officer. You're Mr. Charles Gordon. Yes. Any idea how it happened? She must have fallen. She was alone. She she was just like this when we found her. Well, it happens a lot with older people. Oh, bad bruise on the head. Uh, we think she hit that table when she fell. Huh? Well, that looks like the answer. I'll call in. They'll send an ambulance. There'll have to be an autopsy. Oh, and I'll need a statement from both of you. Uh, the door was chained from the inside. It had to be an accident. But I didn't say it wasn't. I only said I'd have to get a statement. She's at peace now. Charlie, I feel nervous about all that money back at the house. Why? No one knows it's there. No one knew she had anything. And little by little, I'm going to bank it, invest it, slowly, so nobody gets suspicious. I'm still nervous about $90,000 in the fireplace chimney. Oh, come on, Linda, I'll take you home. I'm going to Belle's apartment and pack up her personal things. Okay, but don't be all afternoon. I don't like being alone with all that money. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gordon. I've come to start clearing my aunt's things, Mr. Geller. Would you let me in, please? Oh, sure, Mr. Gordon. I'm sure sorry about your aunt. When's the funeral? We had it this morning. There wasn't anyone but my wife and me. Ah, uh, too bad old people have to live alone. If you need any help, I'll be glad to well, do thank anything. Thank you. I'm just going to pack her personal things. Well, all right. Call if you need anything. Thank you. Now, let's see. I'll start with the bedroom. No use saving any of this stuff. Get it to the cartons and out to the dump. Oh, Linda might want these blankets, though. Ah, poor Aunt Belle. Two torn slips in an empty drawer. I'll have to... What was that? 
someone there? Is that you, Mr. Geller? No, that must have been the people upstairs. <sighs> Completely empty. I never realized Aunt Bell was... There is someone out there. There's no one here. I'm letting my imagination get me. It is kind of spooky in here, all alone. Ah, oh, poor old thing, what she must have gone through, alone all the time. No wonder she started seeing things. I'll get all the stuff from the bedroom and... That was something. Who's there? Answer me, who's there? I heard you. I know there's someone here. I heard you. Now, where are you? Why don't you answer me, damn it? Hello? Hello? Oh, Charles, thank God you answered. Linda. Charles, come home quickly right now. Linda, what's the matter? It's this man in the living room. What man? I don't know who he is. He just sits there on the couch, smiling at me. He won't leave and he won't answer me. He won't say a word. Good Lord. Oh, Charles, I'm scared. Come home now, please. Charles! Funny how word gets around when there's money hidden somewhere. It looks as though Charles is in for some strange company of his own. But then, that sort of thing doesn't happen. Linda must be imagining things. I'll be back shortly. Imagination is a curious thing. It can haunt us, help us, even hurt those who cross the line between imagination and reality. Imagination, the stuff of which dreams and radio mystery theater plays are made. We hope we've teased yours with tonight's story and hope you'll be back for more. Our cast included Bryna Rayburn, Laurie March, George Petrie, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. There are no such things as ghosts. I'm just imagining things. But I see you. I see you. Now, don't. Don't hurt me. Wherever you are, please, stay away from me. You want me to leave the house? I will. I will. If that's what you want, I'll go right down the stairs, walk out of the house, and never come back. Is that what you want? Please. No! Don't touch me! Let me out! Suicide. That's what all the papers say, Mr. Garth. But we know better. It's ghosts. That house is haunted. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.